My name is Dr. Jamil Nejem. I am an anesthesiology attending here at the Hospital for Special Surgery. I'm also a critical care attending here. Today we're in our orthopedic special care unit and I'm going to show you how to perform and how we use the FATE exam. The FATE exam, it stands for Focus Assessed Transthoracic Echocardiography and it is a means by which we and other non-cardiologists um, use to augment their physical exam um, and to optimize cardiopulmonary resuscitation in the perioperative period. This is the FATE card. Today I'm going to show you primarily uh, the basic FATE views. For the basic FATE views, there's four. Uh, we're going to start with our subcostal view. We're going to then move to our apical four chamber. We'll then move to position three, which is the parasternal long and short axis views. And then finally, we'll take a look at the pleura, and that's position four. This fate card uh, is available online and also as an app. If you are interested in downloading it, uh, go to the URL www.fateprotocol.com. So today, we'll be using the cardiac phased array probe uh, in order to perform the fate exam. This is the most common probe that we use. However, if you do not have a cardiac phased array probe uh, at your institution, you can use a curvilinear probe as well. In terms of the probe itself, there is an orientation marker that you can see that is right here above my finger. This orientation marker lines up with the right side of the screen here, and this is the orientation marker that we see here on our Sonosite machine. The first view that we're going to look at is our position one subcostal view. For this view, I place the transducer under the xiphosternum with the orientation marker towards the left. Notice I hold the probe with my palm above the probe, not below the probe. For position one, uh, the ideal position is that the patient is in the supine position. If you're having tr trouble obtaining an image, uh, you can have the patient take a big deep breath and then release it slowly. The other thing you can do is try and rotate the probe counterclockwise by about 10 degrees. This is our position one and uh, what you can see in terms of the anatomy is that the liver is in the near field and then as you come down the first chamber you're going to see is the right ventricle and the right atrium here which you can partially see and then you'll see the left ventricle and the left atrium below that and you can see both the tricuspid and the mitral valves here. This view is great uh, for looking at overall cardiac function. Uh, as well you can use it to evaluate for pulmonary embolism and pericardial effusions. In this position one of the views that we can get is the IVC view. Uh, I'm just going to briefly talk about that. Um, basically, uh, you turn the orientation marker uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise to obtain this view. And we use this in the perioperative period all the time to evaluate uh, volume status in our extubated patients. In position two is the apical four chamber view. In this position, it's ideal to have the patient 45 degrees on their left side. Notice how I hold the probe. It's at the apex of the heart and I have the orientation marker down. If you're having trouble finding the image, it's sometimes helpful to palpate the pulpus cordis and place your transducer there in order to obtain an optimal image. This is our apical four chamber view. What you can see is the apex of the ventricle is right in the middle of the screen. Right below that you have the left ventricle, the mitral valve, the left atrium. And over here you have the right ventricle. We're starting to see some of the tricuspid valve and the right atrium. This view is great for evaluating overall cardiac function. Uh, by looking at the right ventricle we can evaluate for pulmonary embolism. Um, as well we can use it to uh, more, more closely examine mitral and tricuspid valves. The next view we have, position three, 
is the parasternal long axis view. Notice that I'm holding the probe parasternally between the second and the fourth rib interspace. Unlike other positions, for this one, the orientation marker needs to be positioned facing towards the right shoulder. For this view, the ideal patient position is in the left decubitus position. You want to hold the probe right next to the sternum between the second and fourth interspace. And as I mentioned, the orientation marker needs to be facing towards the right shoulder. For this, small angulations and rotations can help to optimize the left ventricle. This is our parasternal long axis view. What you can see here is the right ventricle is here. Then going down you have the aortic valve and the mitral valve here. And this also opens up our left ventricular outflow tract. So we have the left atrium into the left ventricle and out through the aortic valve. This view is another great view to evaluate overall cardiac function. You can evaluate both the left side and the right side. Um, when looking at the right side of the heart, we can evaluate for pulmonary embolism. And as well, we can use this view to uh, further evaluate both the aortic and the mitral valves. The next view that we're going to look at is the parasternal short axis view. For this, we have the patient remain in the lateral decubitus position. And from the position of the parasternal long axis view, we rotate the probe 90 degrees to, ob to obtain the parasternal short axis view. Like the parasternal long axis view, in order to optimize the image, we're going to make small movements in terms of both the rotation and the angulation. Specifically, if we find that we're at too basal a level, what we're going to do is we're going to tilt the probe towards the patient's right shoulder. And if we find that we're at too apical a view, we're going to tilt the probe down towards the patient's left hip. So what we have here is our parasternal short axis view. Uh, and what you see primarily is a cross-sectional view of the left ventricle, really at the level of the papillary muscles. Sometimes you can see the right ventricle. This is an example of our parasternal short axis view, but what you can see here is we're too basal, and that you can see the, the mitral valve moving there, and so that is a situation where you would tilt your probe towards the patient's right shoulder. This is another example where of the parasternal short axis view where we're a little bit too apical, and in this case what we'd want to do is we want to tilt the probe towards the patient's left hip. This view is great for a multitude of reasons. Once again, we use it to evaluate overall cardiac function. We can look for various wall motion abnormalities, especially in the left ventricle. Uh, the other thing that you can see with this view sometimes is signs of right ventricular strain, such as you would have in a pulmonary embolism. The other thing we can use it for is a quick assessment of volume status and that the, uh, the EF would appear to be uh, abnormally high. We call it the kissing papillary sign and that the two papillaries come together uh, due to decreased volume. The last view that we have is our plural view and we actually look at this from both the right and the left side. Notice that I have uh, positioned the patient sitting up and this will allow us to evaluate for pleural effusions as they'll pull either on the right or the left side. For the right-sided pleural view, we hold the probe with the orientation marker towards the right shoulder. I'm positioned in the mid-axillary line and we're looking for an image 
that transects the liver. The left view can be more difficult to obtain than the right view because of the spleen. And so in order to optimize this view, we will try and aim the probe more posteriorly and place the probe closer to the mattress. So this is our right-sided pleural view. And you can notice that our orientation marker is faced towards the right side. Uh, this indicates that uh, our liver is here, and this is our pleura and diaphragm, and over on the far right of the screen is the lung field. One thing you can have a patient do is take a big deep breath in, and we're showing that here, and this is normal as the lung uh, expands, it appears to obliterate the pleura, and then you can see it come back. If you have a pleural effusion, you would not notice this. This is our left-sided pleural view. You notice once again the orientation marker is to the right side, which indicates the lung field here, and we have the spleen here. Notice the spleen is not as good as an interface for our ultrasound beams. You can have the patient take a big deep breath to look for a pleural effusion there, and what you should see is this image with obliteration of the diaphragm, and as the lungs deflate, it returns back to normal. So this concludes our examination using the FATE protocol. Uh, to review, we looked at four different positions. The subcostal view, the apical view, the peristernal long and short axis views, and our plural views. Uh, once again, I refer you to our FATE card. If you are interested, uh, you can download the app from either the Android or the Apple App Store, uh, or you can look it up online at www.fateprotocol.com.